On that last slide, we were dealing with sets of examples where stereocenters were set either in the dienophile or the diene, not both at the same time. In cases when stereocenters are established in both the diene and dienophile, we can end up with two diastereomeric products, endo and exo, and actually both are possible even though the reaction is concerted, as we'll see in a second. The exo product occurs when the dienophile substituent is relatively far from the diene as the dienophile approaches the diene. And so, in the case shown here, the X substituent is relatively far from the diene, and the resulting structure we get in this particular case has a trans relationship between R and X, and we'll visualize this in a future video. What we, what we can do, however, to generate a different arrangement of the dienophile with respect to the diene is flip it over. This doesn't really change how the alkene behaves since the alkene is basically symmetric with respect to this rotation, but doing that reorients the X substituent. Notice in the bottom case that now the X substituent on the dienophile is pointed toward the diene, and this changes the stereochemistry. Because X is underneath the diene as new bonds form in the reaction, this is what's called the endo direction of approach, and the endo product in this case has a cis relationship before the R group that's pointed out. Keep in mind, this looks like an out R group based on the C shape of the diene, as we just saw, and X ends up cis to that R group in this endo product. We're going to look at the trajectory of the diels alder reaction, how the atoms actually approach and bond to each other in more detail in a future video, but for now I wanted to take a look at the three-dimensional structures of the endo and exo products so that we can get a sense of the difference. So here we see the endo product. The dienophile involves this red atom and these two atoms here, and the former carbons of the diene are these four here. And what we can notice about this is that the red atom ended up where it did because the dienophile approached in such a way that the red atom was over top of the diene. Visualize the red atom being closer to this region of space as the reaction is progressing above the diene face. So it was approaching such that it was pointing toward the diene, an endo direction of approach. As it rotates out as the bond is formed, it ends up in a position above the plane of the cyclohexene ring, and this is the same side of the ring that the out substituent in the diene, here I'm drawing it in green, ends up. So in the endo product, we see a cis relationship between the out substituent of the diene and the endo group itself, and this is a general rule that we'll return to later. If we look at the exo product, we see a different situation. Now, because the red group was pointed away from the diene during approach, visualize the red group being more out in this region as the dienophile approached the diene, that red group ends up below the plane of the cyclohexene ring, but the out group on the diene here in green still ends up in the same position above the plane of the ring because it rotates the same way. It didn't change positions. What changed position in flipping the dienophile over was the orientation of this red group. And so in the exo product, we see a trans relationship between the out substituent here in green and the exo group in the dienophile here in red. 